Hello everyone, this is GamerCat09 and welcome back to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. We are continuing where we left off. Um, that is weird. Uh, which I guess is from this save point. I don't remember what we were doing, but... Oh yeah, we were playing as the, the two girls that just ended up here. Um, okay. And also, as a side note, I am a little sick... I do kind of have a coughing thing, so I'm going to try not to cough in everybody's ears, but if I do, I apologize for this segment. Oh boy. Oh god, why am I hitting that? Okay, they say the same- oh. That's horrible! Hey, seriously, you need to stop shoving. Chihaya seemed almost as if she were trying to hide behind my body from the sight of the severed head, and she wound up pushing me forward in the process. If she didn't want to see it, she could just not look at it. Why did she need to be so grabby? Worse still, she was pushing me right into the shelf, giving me an uncomfortably close view of the head, not to mention the things crawling on it. Oh god, no! See, this is why you should keep your hands to yourself. Honestly, am I supposed to be your shield or something? Okay, so they do have different reactions to the stuff. Good to know. What's this? Looking for a friend, are you? You sure she's really your friend? Maybe you're the only one who thinks so. Okay. Okay, so we came from that direction. So let's go to the boys' room. <clears throat> the boys' room entrance is completely boarded up. There's no way to get inside right now. But there's a spirit here. It's a thoroughly decomposed corpse. Do you know what lies beneath this school? It's a mire of agony and torment that can drive a man to madness with a single touch. Uh, thank you. Also, hey, hey, dude. Gozen is playing more Dead by Daylight. Um, so we can't go in there. So that goes up. This goes out. Eh, go this way. Go to... The staff room. See what happens. <laughs> Over the hills we go, laughing all the way. Oh, there's a large hole in the floor here. Not going that way. Oh, I didn't read the first part. Dancing through the halls, filled with bodies in decay. Over the hills we go, laughing all the way. Amazing. Great Christmas music, guys. Let's go check the music room. Because of reasons. I'm dead now. All I've done since I got here is watch out for her. All I've done is protect her. I wish I hadn't bothered. Because in the end, she died too. Stupid, 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 stupid. I'm going to kill her, even though she's already dead. Killer, 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 killer. Give me my life. Give me back my life, goddammit. Okay. <clears throat> These are portraits of influential people connected with the school, or possibly with the classroom specifically. Not an uncommon thing to find. In this atmosphere, though, it really looks like they're all staring directly at you, no matter what angle you view them from. It's creepy. I, I, I agree. Are they all the same thing? Yeah, okay. What the hell just happened? Suddenly Chihaya, Chihaya tensed up and hid herself behind my back. You're not the only one who's scared, you know. What was that? Who, who was that? Was it the camera dude? Was that Taguchi? Ah! 
It's a piano. Why are you screaming? Sorry, I accidentally dropped my pouch on the piano. Jeez, don't scare me like that. Okay, so I can't check that. There's no body here on this one. Okay. So, um... Anybody in front here? Nope. Okay. Uh... Did they both go to the second floor? Yes. Let's see if we go this way first. Oh, over the kills we go. I didn't see that. Good one. Art room. Is there a ghosty in here? Yep, there's still a ghosty in here. Let's check this first. The inside of the cabinet is blood red throughout as if someone very carefully painted it that way. Oops. I clicked outside of the thing. Actually, wait. Isn't that a tube of red paint inside? And it looks unopened? In fact, it looks completely untouched. There's not even the slightest indication that anyone has much as moved that tube of paint in years. Which means this red coloring must be... Blood. The entire canvas is covered from corner to corner with realistic scale drawings of flies. Thousands upon thousands of them. Oh. Okay. The canvas is blank. Or it might be anyway. There seems to be a faint, almost imperceptible stain all across it. Roughly in the shape of a human torso. But it might just be the lighting. Or it might be just your shadow. Nothing in here seems particularly useful. Okay. They can't see this, apparently. Nor do they care. So, there's nothing to see here. The art room is useless to them. Ref room. What? The dull, gloomy corridor suddenly lit up brightly for just a moment. And in that moment, something became visible. What? Oh, that. There, glinting in the dim light, sat what appeared to be a component from some electronic device. In contrast with everything else in the school, it seemed like a fairly recent item. A decade old at most, but likely much newer. What do you suppose this is? I'm not really sure, but it kind of looks like a battery, maybe. Hmm, maybe somebody brought a beefed up phone or a game system in here. Might as well take it with us, I figured. Though if I gave it to Chihaya for safekeeping, it would no doubt wind up on the ground again somewhere. So I decided I'd just pocket the thing. Alrighty. And then excuse me for a sec. Okay. Oh. Okay. I, I've been... Recommended to save, so therefore I shall. Let's continue. See what happens. The door to the reference room is frozen. Can't open it. Burr, burr, burr. There's nothing here. Okay. Yep, okay. Go to the girls' room and die because that's what we do when we go to the girls' room. Even in real life, we just die. It's very symbolic.
No, there's no bodies hanging up there. That's a good thing. There's an excessive amount of human hair jamming the drain, generating an intermittent sucking noise that makes it sound like it's gasping for air. The stench is indescribable and seems to have attracted thousands upon thousands of tiny bugs that might that have transformed the white basin into a black mass. Okay. It can't be for both. It's us. God, we look terrible. But then, we haven't eaten a thing since we got here, and we certainly haven't been able to rest for even a moment. Okay. Same thing. There's a note back here I can't read, because fuck us. No indication of anyone occupying any of these stalls, yet every single one of them seems to be locked from the inside. Okay. So... Go this way. Or let's go outside of the bathroom. I'll never go to a girl's room again. There you go, that's the spirit. Okay, nothing there. Go this way. Go this way. I noticed there was a thing. There were like stairs, or uh, yeah, stairs. I want to look up here. It's packed tightly with desks. You can't get up to the third floor. So there's nothing important here. Okay. Cool. So let's go back down. Just use a tree like our ancestors. Okay, so let's go here. Now we gotta check, like, the hallways and stuff. I guess. Nothing. Outside of the music room? <clears throat> Uh-oh. On the other side of the hole, there was now a man collapsed on the ground. I couldn't see any obvious wounds on him, but he wasn't moving at all. It was hard to ascertain details in this dim light, but he seemed a bit too big to be a middle schooler or high schooler, and he wasn't wearing a uniform. Who is that? Seems a bit too old to be a student. Is he dead? I don't know. Um, are you all right? Are you injured, maybe? Still no response. Oh my god. Oh my god, maybe we should chuck something over there. Or maybe that would be a bad idea. Nari, look. This was lying on the floor over there. A camera? I wonder if it's his. It was a fairly expensive looking DV camcorder. And a well-worn one at that, with dings and chips all over it. Nonetheless, it looked like it probably still worked. Uh-oh. Is he waking up or something? Wh what is it this time? Maya. Oh boy. Mayu, where have you gotten yourself off to? Mayu, I swear I heard your voice just a moment ago. You can't be far. I'm 
寂しくはないか。You were singing about missing me. Are you okay? Have you been injured? Are you afraid? Are you lonely? くそ。あ、田口さんは何やってんだ。遅いな。何が情報交換だよ。そんなことしてる暇があったら、俺は眉を。Damn it, Taguchi! What the hell is keeping you? It's been well over an hour. I'm waiting here to exchange information with you when I could be out searching. Damn it, God damn it, why has it come to this? Ah,、oh, Mayu, I don't care about anyone else. I just want you to be safe, just you, and I'll be happy. <laughs> The hell are you looking at? Oh, for her. In my agitated state, I kicked a pair of hallway slippers that was sitting on the ground nearby, and they flew right into the dead girl's face. Oh, that's not a good way to. Do, do not disrespect the dead dude. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing sitting in a place like that anyway? You're dead. You're not worthy of such an honored seat. You're an eyesore. Oh god. Hmm, what's that look? You think I'm strange? What gives you the right, you goddamn stiff? I grabbed her jaw and began shaking it around and was a bit startled by the sensation. It felt just like I was touching living flesh. Except this person was very, very cold. Cold as a statue. A statue covered in skin and muscle, but a statue nonetheless. What am I doing? Have I lost my mind? Why else would I be venting my anger at a dead body? <laughs> <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I see now that your eyes have been sliced up. So you really weren't looking at anything, were you? <laughs> hmm? What's wrong? Cat got your tongue. If I'd asked you this a few days ago, I've no doubt you've been able to voice your objections and slap me right in the face, Miss Sarissa Kaida. Pity. Get it together, Sakataru. If you keep this up, you'll never find Mayu. Besides, this poor girl is an unfortunate victim. She's done nothing wrong. I think the darkening is really getting to him. It's kind of like a, like a Jekyll versus Hyde scenario where, like, internally he's like, dude, stop doing that. On the outside, he just doesn't know how to react, so he's just acting out. So it's, that's, this is a really interesting perspective that we've never seen of Marishige. Wanna know a secret, Kaida? You're quite the looker right now, but you're just going to rot from here on out. Just rot and rot. Dun dun. Dun dun ksatte. Niku ga kuchi kuchi no soup みたいになって You'll rot until your flesh gets all soft and mushy like soup, your skin starts to stretch and sag, and your eyeballs spill out of your head like raw eggs. Which is true! I actually, side note, I actually read an article about what happens to your body 
after you die, like if it decays, like just anything, if it decays and then doesn't get taken care of, like in this situation, you're pretty much blown up and like all of your internal organs and juices and stuff just kind of like rupture out of your body and then kind of wither out until you like stink and dry up and then bugs attract you and it's nasty. But that's pretty much what happened. Your eyes do explode and everything. That's why... Usually when you die, you, you either get cremated or embalmed, you get properly buried, so that way none of this happens and you don't reek. The smell you produce will be fouler than any toilet in every part of you. Your face, your mouth, your bowels will become maggot chow. <laughs> but before that happens, yes, let's preserve that beautiful form of yours, shall we? I flip my cell phone back on and switched it to camera mode, centering the lens on the lovely Miss Kaida. Her slashed and broken gaze was focused ahead of her at a downward facing angle, yet in contrast to these injuries she wore a peaceful expression on her face, almost as if she were posing for me, just waiting for me to hit that shutter button. Mm. <laughs> Mmm, what a lovely visage. This will make a splendid picture. Oh god, he went crazy. <laughs> Superb! Have you ever heard of a French film called Unchien Andalo? Am I saying that right? You remind me so much of it right now. Ha ha ha. Might I take another? Any French people in the audience right now? Un, un chien andalo? Un chien? Chen? Chien? I don't know. <laughs> yes, Blah Wolf, should we be concerned? Are you secretly Marishike? <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine this guy popping a boner right now, like the hardest boner ever over this. <laughs> you might be more charming now than you were when you were alive. Mm, yes, I think you must be. Ah, <laughs> I mean, just look at that face! The line formed by those stiffened cheekbones. Ah, I'm sorry, but it's just so erotic! And those cuts on your wrist! I tried poking her wound with my finger and heard a moist, squishy sound as my fingertip was swallowed up. She'd gone cold, but I guess there was still some blood left in her. Either that or decomposition was already well underway. I pushed farther in, digging my finger through the gaps between her muscles until it struck something smooth and hard. Oh god. Mmm, I've struck bone. This vicious chill belies the steadfast strength of the marrow within. It's almost sensual. As I drew my face into her forehead, a few particles of perfume scented the foul odor of sweat and sebum that had her heretofore, 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 here heretofore, heretofore been assaulting my nostrils. <laughs> Sealed in a place like this, unable even to wash your hair, but you still found the time and energy to groom. How delightful. Am I the only person that if I was stuck 
in a place like this, I think personal hygiene would be the least of my concern. In all honesty, you would smell better than the dead by default, so like, if I smell like garbage, I apologize, but there are circumstances, you know what I mean? I'd rather be alive and disgusting than like, smelling like perfume and dead. But that's just me! I, I digress, I guess. I don't know. That's that's my 2019 quote. Smell better than the dead by default. <laughs> and yet, the smell of death and blood suits you so much better. So much better. He's lost it. He has lost it. I... What the hell have I been doing? Why have I been taking pictures of corpses? <laughs> I suppose they do say stress is the real killer in situations like this. So anything I could do to relieve my built-up stress <laughs> isn't so bad. Um, I think stress isn't really the word you want to use in this place. So, yes, it's all just happenstance. There happen to be corpses in here, so I... So, Come to think of it, Taguchi was taking footage of the corpses in here as well, and he said he was doing it so he could file a police report. One hour has long since come and gone. Perhaps it's time I search for him as well. It's entirely possible that he's met with Mayu and is accompanying her, after all. In which case, standing around here will accomplish nothing. In all honesty, it's probably best that he didn't... That he doesn't survive this, if he's that far into darkening. Because if he does make it out of here, he will be considered absolutely crazy. His future will be ruined. And he will not be a regular, normal human being ever to be released in society ever again. So, I mean... Amidst the darkness of the corridors, I spotted human figures. Living ones, this time. Two of them. Both female, and both much younger than I. I approach them without making a noise or saying a single word to announce myself. Oh boy. So that's what she looks like. So that's Nari and that's Chihaya. Wh what is it this time? Junior high, I guess. Maybe 12 or 13 years old. One was clearly much more fear prone than the other, and she'd wrap herself around her companion's arm and was actively trying to hide behind her. She was looking in my general direction, but with the light with the lighting as dim as it was, I had no idea whether or not she could see me. And while finding survivors in this land of the dead was a rare occurrence indeed, my focus was squarely on the man sprawled out farther down the hall. He was unconscious, probably worse. An uncrossable gap separated us, but I definitely recognized him. It was Taguchi. Oh, because he had the camera. So, who is this talking? Uh, no. uh, um, it is Marishige. Okay, so, Marishige went looking for everybody else. He ran across these two, and he sees Taguchi on the other side. Is Mr. Taguchi dead? Was I concerned about him? Did I feel for him? Honestly, no. I felt nothing whatsoever at that moment. I was simply asking because I was curious. I'm normally calm and stoic, sure, but this seemed cold even by my standards. 
Did I really not care one way or the other? Or another if he were dead? Hey, you know that guy? Not really. But you just said a name, didn't you? Here, I think this belongs to him. Give it a look. The girl handed me a beat-up DV camera. No doubt about it, this was the same one Taguchi had been looking into when I met him earlier. I took it without a word and immediately tried to turn it on, but to no avail. It had no power. Battery's dead. Doesn't seem it'll be of much use anymore. I think we found its battery pack on the ground, too. Here, try it out. Okay. The hell is his problem? Okay, he says. What kind of social reject is accepts a stranger's kindness like that? Not that I need thanks or anything, but still. Hold on. Okay. Trying to mute out the coughs so that no one hears me. Hi, Spooky! Happy Monday! Honestly, you only missed about a half hour, which isn't a hell of a lot. We're, we're good. It's just been a lot of talking and not too much action. Nari! Don't worry, he's not even listening. The chat could catch you up, Spooky. I placed the battery pack into the DV camera and immediately saw the red power light pop up. Pop on. Still fully functional by all appearances. Now I can check over the footage she's collected. So what are you two doing here? Oh, you know, just taking the visit, strolling around, having a coffee. Huh? Um, well... We're looking for our friends Nana Agasawa Nana Agasa Agasawara and Hikari Kirigami, fellow students from Mushashigawa Mushashigawa Junior High, and some others from the senior high. Dear Lord, what a tongue twister. My name's Inari Amato Amatoya Amatoya and this is Chihaya Yamase. Yamasi. Yamasa? <laughs> These names will be the end of me for sure. I see, middle schoolers then. <laughs> the littler of you two reminds me of Mochida's sister. Huh? I have no idea what you're talking about. You're a senior high student, right? I'm looking for someone too. Her name is Mayu Suzumoto. Have either of you seen her? You know, it's proper manners to introduce yourself before you start asking questions. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I'm Sakataro Murishige, an 11th grader at Kisaragi Academy High School. Back to my question then. Have either of you seen Mayu? I have a picture of her here. I flipped open Mayu's student ID to its photo page, almost as if I were a sheriff flashing my badge, but the responses from these two were not encouraging. They exchanged a quick glance with one another, then shook their heads. I don't think either of us have seen her, no. Oh, 
I see. That's all right. There may be some clue as to her whereabouts in this camera. There was something that Taguchi was not telling Marishige when he was looking. So I wonder if he does have like a close up of like somebody or something that he found that was in question. I rewound the tape a bit and put the camera in playback mode. Immediately horrifying imagery began displaying on the device's tiny LCD screen. Audio was irrelevant. It seemed like the only sounds on the tape were those of Taguchi's ragged breathing and footsteps and his occasional self-mutterings. 90% of the video footage then consisted of dead bodies, while the remaining 10% was mostly just the camera autofocusing in the dim light. Each body was shot from a variety of angles so their causes of death could be easily determined. Guess he was really planning on showing this to the police. The hell is this? It's nothing but dead bodies! Kid it away! I don't want to see that! The two nosy girls were peeking in on the video's contents over my shoulder, and neither seemed quite certain how to react. As normal people. Hmm, <sighs> amazing. He did a really nice job with these. So many bodies I haven't seen yet. So many. They're like shiel. I think they're shiel? Shiel? Shiel paintings? They're so beautiful. Still, his technique could be better. He does little to catch the viewer's eye. There's too much restraint, too much distance. If it were me... Okay. Hmm? Hmm? What's the matter? Why exactly are you laughing? Laughing? Am I laughing? Yes, you're smiling and laughing, like you're having a grand old time. Well, that's <laughs> rather odd, isn't it? Nari, let's... Okay, I'm sorry, but we have to be going now. Going? Where exactly? Well, we were in the middle of searching for our friends. What's your rush? Maybe there's something I can do to help. Also, why are kids in this school so trusting of everybody? Like, your kids. If you saw somebody that you didn't know, why would you just be like, Oh, hey, what's up? Who are you looking for? Like, if, if I saw somebody that wasn't someone I recognized, I would just automatically assume they were the cause of the dead bodies. But, like, they just met up and just started conversing, just like they all do. They're just all like, Hey, how long have you been here? And, like... Like, so naive. That's quite all right. We'll handle it on our own. Goodbye now. Smart girls. They shouldn't have associated with him in the first place. Seriously, stranger danger. <laughs> I think there must have been a misunderstanding. Maybe they thought I was some kind of pervert. You think, Marishige? You think? Well, that's fine by me. It would be a pain in the ass to change their minds anyway. <laughs> 
Besides, that was a rather fascinating reaction. I think I'll leave the camera here. It's Taguchi's eyes, after all. No one else could possibly feel the way he felt from anything he caught on it. I want to keep taking in these surroundings with my own eyes, to keep feeling what the school has to offer in my own personal way. I feel like this is like the growth of a serial killer. I feel like this is how the brain works of a murderer happens. It starts with someone with this mindset that thinks that death and like torture and destruction and just uncomfortable awkwardness is a beautiful thing and then they just grow from it. I want my own collection. Or I suppose I just want to possess the dead. I want to make them mine. Wait, what am I thinking? I should be searching for Mayu right now. He gets so easily distracted. These photos are just for stress relief. If I lost myself to despair before finding Mayu, she could be gone forever. And I mustn't let that happen. Yes, this is all just one step in the long process of finding her, and I certainly can't be mixing up a single step with my own with my end goal. But I want to see more. Oh boy. Taguchi is completely motionless. It's impossible to tell from here if he's dead, though, or simply unconscious. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, it must have been a level of insanity he had when he chased Yuka. Uh, another earthquake? After bracing myself for an indeterminate amount of time, the earthquake finally subsided. Ooh! Thank you for hosting, Spooky! Thank you so much. There's a candle shimmering here along with a note. Whatever you do, don't look behind you. What happens if I do? Oh god. I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save, and I'm gonna look, cause I'm crazy. Yamamoto, where's Fukurai? I don't know. He was with me until a short while ago, but then we found ourselves running from a man with an axe, I think, and we got separated. I see. That is rather worrisome. I hope he's alright. How about you? You're not hurt, are you? I'm fine. This isn't my blood. But the school is even more dangerous than I thought. Whoever that man is, I'm certain he's been going around killing anyone who gets lost in here. I haven't encountered him personally, so I couldn't say. Uh, uh, I'm scared. If I'm by myself, he'll find me. Shall I accompany you then? Are you sure? Why is he willing to go with her, but like, he fucks off everybody else? I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't mind. Thank you! 
Yamamoto, overcome with relief, suddenly grabbed hold of me. Sending me into a coughing spree. Hey! Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you have a girlfriend already, right? Suzumoto, I think you said her name was- Oh, she's calling him out! We're not like that. She's like a little sister to me, I guess. Well, hun, I used to say that about John, too, before we started dating, and guess what? Surprise! She's not. She's your girlfriend. I'll bet life would be a whole lot less boring if I had a big brother like you. I wouldn't be so sure about that. People always seem to regard me as a boring human being, especially people of this generation. Oh man, imagine if he ran into Kazami. It's really gotten dark in here. Hmm? Yamamoto? Hang on a sec. Hang on just a sec. I've got a light. I've never had Tobleron. What an unnerving hallway. It's much darker than the others. But then, I suppose there was one just like it in the main building. It's not just dark, but cold, too. No, I was, I was saying, before John and I started dating, when we were working, I always thought we were close. I was like, oh, he's like, he's like a, like a brother to me. Like, he's just kind of like a younger brother, because we're like two years apart. And it eventually led to like, oh, it's, it's not that. It's because I like him. <laughs> it's not like a little brother thing. So that's what I was getting at. Yeah, we should head back. I think we may be in danger if we keep going. But the way back is gone. No, Shimata. Wait, do they meet in the first the first game? I don't even remember. Damn. Ah, Yamamoto, do you still have that alcohol lamp? Sorry, that didn't quite make it, but I've got plenty of candles. Candles won't be enough. Well, look, there's a room. Let's see what's inside, okay? Wait, it might not be safe. We should proceed with the utmost ka. Uh-oh. She's dead. Oh. Oh. What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? So sorry, I didn't hurt you, did I? I'm just fine. Please don't misunderstand. I I didn't mean to. Never mind that. Let's say we have a little chat. What? What? Do you? What is happening? Don't you like me, Shig? No. Oh my. Oh! Is she actually dead and someone possessed her? Who? Who are you? Who do you think I am, Shig? Is 
Is this Sachiko fucking with us or is it actually Mayu? Cut it out. Don't call me that. I tried to pick myself up off the floor, but she grabbed me tightly by the wrists. L let me go. How do you know about me? About Mayu? I struggled with all my might, and in the process, I inadvertently slapped Yamamoto, or whoever this was, square in the face. That sounds like... Sachiko. Ow! How dare you raise your hand to a girl, Shig. Hehe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Her arm's missing! Look at that! The skin from Yamamoto's face began peeling back and the little girl's face burst out from within, covered in blood and muscle tissue. I don't even know how it's possible, but black hairs burst out from Yamamoto's suit next spreading across the ground like a black wing unfurling. Immediately, a musty smell began permeating the air and I became aware of all the body parts around me. Hands, feet, entrails, and a veritable lake of blood. You. Were you always her? What did you do to Mayu? Now, what did I do to her? I remember she wouldn't shut up. She kept chirping, shake, 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 like a Japanese sparrow. A Suzume, if you will. <laughs> but she's not chirping anymore. <laughs> Want to see for yourself? <laughs> No, 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 that can't be. I've been watching you, you know. I like you. You've got promise. People like you do show up from time to time. Freaks of nature who have a real affinity for this place. What are you trying to say? What... what the hell are you planning to do with me? You scared? <laughs> That's understandable, but the thing is, I get you. You're not afraid of people dying, you're just afraid of you dying. <laughs> Let go of me. I. I. Sure, I'll let you go. And when I do, I want you to walk over to that door. Let the school guide your way. It's where you'll find the person you've been looking for all this time. Shig, don't look at me. Not the way I am now. Ah, Mayu. <laughs> I'm quite looking forward to your reaction. <laughs> but if it's boring, I'll kill you. True to her word, the girl let go of my wrists. I guess sometimes it helps to be a little, like, sick in the head when you're stuck in a haunted dimension school. Because you don't immediately die. Uh, the positives? The little wins? I don't know. 
Her body then began sinking into the floor, little by little, until there was nothing left of it. It was as if she were lying along the shore as the tide came in and slowly rose above her body, or maybe the school just swallowed her up. The only things that remained of her were Yamamoto's school uniform and that face mask made from her skin. Oh God. Is this a dream? Or have I just completely lost it at this point? Either way, so did she carve off the face of that girl? Ooh. That sucks. I need to see Mayu. She's alive. She has to be. Mayu, I'm coming for you. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Oh! What? Is it because I looked behind me? Is it because I looked behind me? Probably. I didn't realize that was an ending. I thought that was just the way to go. Alright. Continue. Let's uh, load up this safe. What happens if I do? Don't look back, right? I hit look back, so don't look back. Uh-oh. Stay back! What's wrong? Where's Fukuroi? Well, this is a different reaction. Shut the hell up! I told you to stay back! You, you, you're in league with him, aren't you? Yamamoto-san. You seem confused. What happened, Yamamoto? Don't touch me! There's... there's blood on your hands! You... you really are! You really are! You're mistaken. This is from examining a dead body earlier. It's just as I thought then. How could you be so cavalier about touching corpses? You're... you're not right. Hmm, there's no getting through to her in this state, it seems. I will be fooled and won't be taken in by your lies anymore. That's a different uh, path than we took. Uh, she's certainly in a mood. Living humans are so irredeemably noisy. People need to understand the value of silence. Yamamoto? Hmm. Gone already, is she? Okay. I should find some place to collect myself. Hmm, that's right. I can always go back there. I almost forgot about taping that production of The Barber of Seville. I have to make sure I get home in time. Okay, he's lost it. Either that, or he has a really strange mental way of trying to cope with everything. And here I was again. I pressed the button on my phone to shut off the second alarm I'd set. 
If this time display were accurate, then there was no chance of making it home in time to record the show for Mayu. I'll have to apologize to her later. I slid my finger naturally, almost automatically, from shutting off the alarm to opening my, photo my folder of saved photos. There was no sound in the room other than the tone of my button presses, and virtually no light other than which shone from the LCD screen, or so it seemed anyway. Yet this was my rock. In this place, I could truly relax. Here and here alone, I felt at peace. The air was filled with the overpowering aroma of blood and entrails. It would be enough to make most people vomit, but for me, it was a smell to savor. I'd even describe it as comforting. Perhaps it's because it reminded me that I was in her presence. She, who decorated the wall like a flower in full bloom. When I sat across from her, I felt more at ease than I could possibly convey in words. Oh god, it's my oh, fuck. We've come full circle. We've come full circle. It was as if she'd always be here for me. As if she were waiting for me. And sure enough, whenever I felt wary or needed respite, the door to this infirmary would always open for me, despite its tendency to the contrary. Each time it did too, I would always be drawn in as if the room were swallowing me up, and my eyes would always open upon this offering first. This girl upon the wall, slowly drying and slowly rotting, would always be there to greet me, and never once did I tire of the sight. I've sure taken a lot, so many photos of the dead. I'd begun talking to myself, or maybe I was talking to her. Within my phone's memory were stored some of man's most sensual, most voluptuous objects of objects objects de art, and she was the tip of the brush, the grand prelude. I'd amassed a whole other building's worth of beautiful sculptures to admire now, too. I was thrilled to bursting. Uh. <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> This was the sculpture known as Mitsuki Yamamoto in life, but in death she was my property. One of my many pieces of fond art. Those spirited eyes, now dulled and clammy, those lips that spoke such harsh words, now stained with blood, her abdomen shredded, her inwards exposed. So alluring, so captivating she, was she now, sometimes destroying that which is beautifully only beautiful only deserves to make it more beautiful and truly this was the proof I'm going to say it is Mayu because he's in the infirmary and that's where she died so I'm going to say because she was autopsied and that the death the wrong end that we got was Sachiko saying Look over in the corner what I did. I feel like maybe. I'm not sure. But I have a hunch. Still, it is a shame. It was a shame that I could only gaze upon these gorgeous works of art within these school grounds. Before returning home with Mayu, I need to erase every one of these photographs from my phone. It seems like such a waste. The world in which I once dwelt was far too narrow-minded to accept these masterpieces. It was often a hard place to call home, but as long as I had Mayu with me, I could endure. And to, the, to that end, this folder was an obstacle, a detriment, a hurdle to be overcome before I could rejoin the world of the living. I needed to delete it, to put all of it behind me. Mada. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> if I do it after I get back. Oh no, the ringtone. It's the music. Oh, it's the end of the chapter. So we don't know. Clear. 
Six Meyer chapter is now playable. Oh boy. Okay. Simple pleasures. So we don't know the end of him yet. I feel like being sick kind of gives me a more creepier laugh. It's like, <laughs> I can't do it now. Now that I'm trying to mock it. Still muting the coughs though. I, I have it on the ready, the mute button on the ready. So the new chapter is now Meyer. Because I think we ran into a bunch of dead ends. So I think we got a, a decent amount of dead ends. I got that one. Well, I got the first one with Shig. And I got that weird one from looking behind with, with yeah. So we're just, we're going for it. We're going right into Meyer. Fuck it. Keep going. Am I done with this? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Hold on. I'm not ready. <laughs> Oh god, I just realized there's no more tissues! Oh no, I'm doomed! <laughs> just like Foxy said, close the game, stream over, we're done. Can't do this anymore, oh my god. No! This is gonna be so hard. Oh my god. Oh, this is a bad time to be out of tissues, I'm screwed. Fuck. Oh, Yuka, why? Great. I'm not ready for this one. Where am I? The first thing I saw when I opened my eyes was the ceiling of a dark, gloomy room with flickering, uncovered light bulbs. The random bursts of light they shone were so dim that they only just barely lit up the wood grain on the ceiling enough to see patterns in it. Mm, ow! The back of my head hurt in the same way it would if someone had just pulled my hair really hard. I couldn't do anything about it, though, so I just frowned and waited for it to subside. I wondered if I hit my head somewhere. I can't remember a thing. I suddenly realized that my feet weren't touching the ground, and there was a cold sensation all along my back. I must have been lying down on a hard surface. I tried to move, but both my arms and my legs had gone to sleep, and they wouldn't budge. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I just have to keep lying here until they woke up. I gave up on moving and instead just stared up at the gloomy ceiling again. I don't like it. The wood grain looks like a person's face. I knew it wasn't actually a person, but it really did look like one. And he was glaring down at me with a hateful expression. It was creepy. Why does it look familiar? Where have I seen that face before? Oh, that was it. It looked like the scream. That munch painting we studied in class, except this face was screaming in anger. He hated me. Oh, the the munch um munch painting is like that that swirly that's like oh like the face. That is what she's referring to. <clears throat> Uh, I'm really starting to get scared now. 
if only Big Brother were here with me. He'd just pat my head and laugh and tell me how silly I was being. Oh yeah, where is Big Brother? What what is what is the Big Brother term Onichan? Is it Onichan? I was still a little disoriented, but I turned and twisted my head as best as I could manage to see if I could find him anywhere nearby. Why was I sleeping in a place like this anyway? And why wasn't Big Brother at my side like he always was? It was Onichan. Onichan is how she says it. I remember bringing Big, Big Brother his umbrella, then doing some kind of charm with his friends, and then I was in an old school building. And then Big Brother and I were looking all over for a bathroom so I could go pee and we got separated. So we still haven't peed? Or did we pee in our sleep? Why were we in this school to begin with? Maybe the charm failed and this was our punishment? You got that right. Maybe I was the one who messed it up. I probably shouldn't have even been there. Also accurate. And if I hadn't asked him to help me try to find a bathroom, we wouldn't be separated right now. Also accurate. I should have just held his hand and not let go. I should have lasted a little longer without peeing. Like, dude, like, he's your brother. Like, I'm sure he could have just went in with you when you peed. He didn't have to be creepy and watch you or, like, actually assist you, but he could have been right there. He could have held your one hand while you squatted, but no, but no, your need to pee and be alone and find a bathroom gotcha here gotcha here yuka i am still not letting the pee thing go i am still angry about the pee thing i will never let the pee thing go i i have pee thing issues right now like if you gotta pee and you're in a haunted house or not, not a haunted house but a haunted school or like there's the risk of death that you Fucking go with your friends, you buddy up and pee together. Squat in the hallway. I don't give a shit. Just pee. Because you know what you shouldn't be worried about right now? Is, like, any kind of bowel movement. Any kind of pee. You just do it. Just do it. Welcome to my TED Talk. Thanks for coming. But holy crap. I'm triggered right now. Then we'd still be together. <laughs> What happened to me after that? Um, um... That's right, I finally found a bathroom, but when I went inside... Oh, oh, there were people in there hanging, lots of them. And lightning. I was so freaked out, I went back into the hall and collapsed onto the floor, and then... And then, I was talking with someone. Um... And then, oh, or it was a boy who gotten separated from his little sister, I think. Uh oh. He said he'd help me find Big Brother. His name. So, Kisami Yuya san. That's right. His name was Yuya Kazami. Uh-oh. It hurts. It really hurts. Why can't I move? Why? 
I then realized that I couldn't see my arms. Where, where were they? Why weren't they at my sides? They were still numb too, so I couldn't feel where they were either. But I tried my best to move them anyway. That sounded like rope. Am I tied up? Very perceptive for a young girl. Yes, yeah, sometimes in a haunted house you don't have control over when you pee. Exactly. And my first TED talk is about pee. Absolutely. I thought maybe the reason I couldn't feel my arms or legs and couldn't move was because I, I was tied up really tight and it was cutting off my circulation. Yeah, that seems pretty accurate. Come on, move. With some effort, I was finally able to move my fingertips. I started feeling everything I could, grateful even for this little bit of reassurance. I oftentimes, when I sleep, I, I sometimes catch myself with my arms above my head like this on my pillow when I sleep. And when I do that, both of my arms lose circulation, like from the shoulders up. And I, I understand how she feels. Like you're just like a flopped fish. You're just like, I can't feel, like I know I have arms, but like I can't feel them. So imagine being tied up like this, laying on a table for like a long period of time and just losing circulation in your limbs. It's gotta be uncomfortable. Yeah, I guess she's already caught. I have no idea. I don't remember this happening in the first game. Uh, I I feel something. <laughs> the rope around my wrists had been tied up tight and looped many times over, and with the circulation trickling back into my hands, it was really painful. Oh lord, you might as well have just not felt anything. <laughs> It hurts. It hurts. I was so scared. It felt like I'd forgotten how to breathe. Uh-oh. Somebody's coming. The footsteps were echoing from out in the hallway. They stopped right in front of this room. Big brother? Big brother? I wriggled in place and screamed as loud as I could. I didn't even care about the old splintery rope cutting into my wrists and ankles anymore. <laughs> big brother, big brother, save me! It's Yuka! I'm right here! Save me, please! Uh-oh. Oh. You shouldn't ride around like that. The ropes will just hurt that much more. Oh! Oh, God, I hate how he's so evil, but he's so fucking sexy. I hate it. Why, why, why? Oh, it sucks so much. Oh, God. I don't know if I ever got wrong end two, or I'm not even sure. I don't think I got that in the first game, or I don't remember. My apologies for the long wait. It's so dark in here. You must have been terrified. Oh! Oh, God. Meyer. Seriously, it is the cute ones you have to worry about. Kizami? Are you alright, Yuka? He was looking at me with a caring, sympathetic smile on his face. He seemed to be really concerned about me. Um, please save me. When I came to, I was all tied up. Is she on, like, an examination table? Or, like... I see there's, like, a faucet spout here. Is she in a science room? Ah. That's what I was you were indeed, and I'm the one responsible for that. Oh, 
I wanted to make sure I never got separated from my dear little sister ever again. Oh lord, her eyes! Huh? Little- oh wait, I don't know why I started reading it in Kazami's voice. Huh? Little sister? You, of course. That's why I had to tie you down so you wouldn't ever leave me. Now riddle me this! Would it be a terrible thing in this situation if you legitimately know that this guy is fucking out of his mind to just play it safe, play by his rules, and be like, yeah, sure, I'm your little sister, as long as you don't die. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, if, if you just want me to be your little sister, great, as long as you don't rape or hurt me, I'm good. <laughs> because honestly, I think fighting this and fighting with a crazy person is the worst thing that you can do. To just play along until you can escape or find some means of like reuniting with your actual brother or something and just leave. You know what I mean? Like, just skedaddle. Just be like, yeah, sure, but I'm your little sister. Okay, bye. You know? And just kind of trust him enough to just slip it out. I don't think evil is sexy. I'm just saying, they make the most evil person sexy. I'm pretty sure he's already established that this version of Together Forever is in death only. Okay, maybe. Why, Kizami? Are you joking with me? Why, you ask? What a silly question. I already told you, because you're my little sister. What part of that don't you understand? I don't understand it at all. I'm... I'm not. Well, you are still just a child, so maybe you're simply too young to comprehend. But don't wor but worry not. Your big brother will tell you all about it. No oh boy. We're siblings, after all. We simply have to reach an understanding. His eyes looked like they were staring far off into the distance, like he was in a trance. I'm scared. Big brother, I'm scared. <clears throat> oh boy. Why was he doing this? Why did he tie me up? And why did he look so happy about it? I didn't get any of it. Every hair on my body was standing on end. I was terrified. Isn't there any way I can escape? The corners of my eyes were on fire. I couldn't stop myself from crying. Tears were flowing down my face like a waterfall. Kazami smiled, then reached out and touched my cheek. His hand was ice cold. It was like there was no blood flowing through it at all, like the hand of a dead person. I've been waiting so long for you to wake up. So, <laughs> <laughs> now show me that spark of life. Put everything you've got into it and cry for me, Yuka. Cry as loud as you can. He slowly and hesitantly took his hand off my cheek, then began walking around me toward my feet. Then he gently grabbed my skirt with one hand 
and drew a knife from his breast pocket with the other. <laughs> it's showtime! It's English! What is he gonna do? Why did he grab the skirt? Like, well, she's wearing a dress. She's not wearing a skirt. So, so there, just like that. That's the voice I've been longing to hear, and the face I've been longing to see. How old is Yuka? 14, according to Wiki Wikipedia? Oh boy. It's only when it's only when one's terror and hopelessness reach their peak that the soul truly shines. I want to see more. Direct more of that at me. Yuka, Yuka, I know you're capable of shining even brighter. Well, don't you worry. Your big brother will help reveal that light. Covered in blood and writhing in pain. Oh, true suffering is a far, far prettier sight than this. Dear Lord. Alright, I take everything back. There's no way she could have faked being his sister and, and not go with this. So, like, she's she's pretty screwed. Hmm? What's wrong, Yuka? This is no time to rest. The fun is only just beginning. Oh, the Corpse Party Wiki? My, my bad. Not Wikipedia. Corpse Party Wiki. It is, mentor is, mentored. it is mentioned that due to how sheltered she is, she has been allowed to act more childlike. Oh. Poor Yuka. <laughs> she's, she's not deemed for this world. Oh, so, why don't you try calling me, big brother? <laughs> big brother, save me! Big brother, please, come save me! What are you saying, Yuka? Your big brother is right here. Look! Right in front of your eyes! No, my big brother is... Uh oh. The panic and fear just kept getting more overpowering. I think I was hyperventilating. But Kazami showed no mercy. Instead, he reached out and grabbed my neck. Living rabbits really do make far too much noise. C can't breathe. Oh boy. What a thin neck you have. So soft and supple. I can feel your carotid artery and your cervical vertebrae perfectly. These muscles, this curvature, so sensual, like it was made for my hand. 
dear lord. This is- this is torturous. I really feel bad for her. I don't remember this from the first game. I don't think I ever witnessed this. <laughs> is it painful? It must be painful. This is your fault, you know. I'm only your big brother around here. Your only big brother, sorry. With that, he let go of my neck, but then hastily pulled the knife in his hands right up to my face. He made sure I could see every inch of it clearly, and just held it there, slowly turning it for what felt like an eternity. So he's he's kind of doing this, and he's kind of going like right up to her face, like pretend this is it. He's going like that, just like fucking with her. In the first game, it cuts off before Yuka wakes up, only seeing aftermath on picture. Oh, I don't think I saw this. I don't remember this at all. <clears throat> Have you gotten a good look at it, Yuka? The knife was stained with red splatter marks. No, not even red, just dark. It wasn't a color I knew well, but there was only one thing it could have been. <laughs> Blood. Oh, this? No need to worry. Kurosaki dirtied it a bit, but it still cuts like new. Oh boy. I was shivering so hard I could feel my teeth vibrating. A chill ran through every part of me as if I were so afraid the hid actually lowered my body temperature. Please tell me that you peed. Please tell me you've peed already. The chattering coming from inside my mouth was getting louder and louder to such an extent that even I was getting distracted by it. What a lovely face. My little sister is doing an excellent job, but her clothes are in the way. a little extreme. Kazami suddenly tore my uniform, exposing my stomach. What's this? Your belly is bouncing like a water balloon. It must be full of guts. He laid the knife blade flat across my belly button, and the sun sensation of cold metal against my skin sent even more shivers up and down my spine. Seriously, we need an adult! Perv alert. <laughs> if it hurts, feel free to scream, okay? There's nothing to be ashamed of. Dear Lord. You know, of all the things, I would kind of hope if I was tied up in a position like this where my arms and legs were numb that you would just work on the arms and legs first, since I can't really feel them that well before you work on the part of the body that I could actually feel, but I guess that's the point of dying in a very torturous way, is they want you to feel what's going on, and I am not ready for this. Hmm? That all you got? Honestly, if I die, I want a guitar riff like this. Just saying. I want to- I want, like, someone to be like, When I die. Mama Cat, I want off this ride. Yeah, shit, shit is getting pretty real. I'm kind of scared for everybody. 
But I do want a guitar riff when I die, just, just saying. Like, at my funeral, somebody play a guitar riff. What's the matter, Yuka? You haven't given up already, have you? Not after I've finally gotten my hands on the little sister I've always wanted. I think this is one of those things that I kind of wish I would have the ability and the power to black out. Wouldn't that be amazing power to be like, Nope, I'm gonna nope my conscious self right out of this fucking bullshit. Like, I would just much rather have the ability to shut my brain off right now. My throat was completely dry. Oh yeah, speaking of which, my throat is completely dry. I actually wanted to cry for help, but the walls of my air pipes were sticking together. Breathing was hard enough. And you, Yuka. Answer me, Yuka. If I was laying in my deathbed, dying from cancer, taking my last breath, and someone bust out with this guitar, I would think that'd be wildly inappropriate. Cat being chased by two people, a murderer and a person playing sick guitar melody. Hi, <laughs> Arachnal, happy Monday. You've, you've walked into quite a scenario. Ooh. Oh no. He's doing the thing. would be more creepier without the guitar riff. Huh. That's a good girl. Now it's time for the main event. <laughs> Why do you have to be sexy? I hate you. <laughs> big, big brother, save me. Fear had taken over. I couldn't hold myself back. I knew it wouldn't go over well. And I knew it would hurt. But I forced myself to cry out. I thought she was going to say I forced myself to pee. But whatever. Big brother, big brother, big brother, big brother! Uh oh. Kimi no Oni chan wa boku daro? I'm your big brother, remember? Ayanari no soi, Yuka. Apologize, Yuka. <laughs> Why isn't someone walking in on this, like, what happens in every freaking anime, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now that simply won't do. You have to say, Big Brother, I'm so very sorry. Do it right this time. Big brother. <laughs> oh my goodness! Thank you, whoever gifted Arachno the the subscription. Thank you. Thank you so much! <laughs> Santa's back! <laughs> My big brother, is it you, Kazami? I, you know, 
like, I don't really know if this is a good thing or a bad thing at this point. I, I don't know if it's good to say this or bad to say this. I, but, like, she's she is pretty ballsy. I will give her that to be like, no, fuck you. I'm not your little sister, but I don't know if it's going to work out really well. Because I'll piss him off even more. She is boned either way, but... I feel like she'd get tortured more for, like, disagreeing with it. I don't know. I'm not your big brother. You bitch. What was that just now? What was that just now? Did the lights go off? Did I imagine it? Oh, is she finally peeing? Whimper trickle, she's finally peeing. Hmm. <laughs> Hate me so much it makes you wet yourself. Oh boy. Oh, how very interesting. Even in such an embarrassing state, you still call out for help from your big brother. Pitiful. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Everyone feels the same way, like, she finally peed! Hooray! Took long enough, Jesus Christ. Because you know what would have happened if she didn't pee? He would have probably cut her open, ripped out her bladder, and made it explode or something. I don't know. But at least she peed. So, if she peed before, it probably would have been a little bit easier for her to withstand this, but now she gets to sit in her own urine on the table, along with possibly blood from all of this. This is... Ah... Uh, either way, this is terrible. This is a very terrible thing. You're my adorable little sister, and I'm going to make you feel real good. So there's no need to lie there crying in your own urine. It's pitiful. Pitiful. Did I just look down at this girl and call her pitiful? Not. Pitiful. <laughs> at least it'll sting for him. This this whole this whole scene, Arachnal's messed up. This whole scene. Why? Why am I feeling pity for her? What's happened to me? Is he is is Kazami having a Jekyll Hyde thing going on too? The poor girl. How is it that I can even how is it that even I can exhibit such useless empty emotions? Is there still some remnant of potential within a man like me to birth these paltry platitudes? I'm not like the others, and yet even I 